Welcome to Hawaii Real. We are here with Uncle Ito, storyteller extraordinaire. That's yeah, me. that's you. Hi, <laughs> hi everybody. This is cool up here in the the, the abandoned castle. The abandoned. <laughs> I'll give you that one. That's for you. Okay. Well, are you ready for some laughter this morning? I'll do my best. Okay, so I'm not okay. supposed to laugh. That's a, not supposed to laugh. Thing. Don't try, try not to laugh. So if I, if I can make him laugh, which shouldn't be hard because he's been laughing out and I turned on the cameras, he's laughing already. Ooh, serious face. Yeah, yeah. Serious I'm going to try to fall asleep. But then, okay. That's how I don't laugh. I fall asleep. Uh, what kind of music do chiropractors like? What kind of music do chiropractors like? Hip hop. Hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah, yeah. It's a starter. It's a starter. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, okay, it's good. Um, so my buddy was telling me that he got a job at a bank, but he got fired the same day because when the lady asked him to check her balance, he went over and pushed her. Mm. Mm-hmm. She fell. I see you got a great beard going. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, I hate, I used to hate all the, uh, facial hair that I had cause I got to shave all the time, but mm-hmm. it grew on me. It does. Why did the coach go to the bank? Uh, why did the coach go to the bank? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Why did the coach, why did the coach go to the bank? To get his quarterback. Mm. See, you're good. See, you're good. Cause that was funny. No, at least he didn't get his nickel back. That would have been oh, sad. that's yeah. horrible. Yeah. That, that's horrible. Nobody likes Nickelback. Not even you? No. <laughs> well, they got like one, maybe. That's right. <laughs> well, that made you laugh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your terrible taste in music made me laugh, yeah. Sing us a tune from Nickelback. I got nothing. Exactly, see? All right. Did, 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 okay. Uh, I'm back. He's back. <sighs> what kind of drink can be bitter and sweet? What kind of drink can be bitter and sweet? Mm. I don't know. What kind of drink can be bitter and sweet? Reality. Mm. That's, that's good. See, I, I'm sure you get better jokes than this, right? I don't. I don't joke. Joke. What is brown and sticky? A stick. A stick. See, that's not. That's not that funny. That is funny. I don't think it's funny. It's existentially funny. I mean, they're like elevator jokes, right? They work on so many levels. <laughs> I never heard that. That is good. It's right here. Ah, that was perfect. <laughs> that was... <laughs> what do you call a fat psychic? A psycho. A fortune teller. Mm, a fortune. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's good. A uh, group of apes started a business. Mm-hmm. It's called Monkey Business. Mm. Mm. Monkey business. Are apes monkeys? Is it like the square? And right no, they're not. Thing? They're yeah. not. So that's where you kind of have to. That's where. It, it's, oh, so it's, I mean, they might identify as as monkeys. Mm. You know, because if they're hanging in a tree, then the, they could they could they identify, could identify as monkeys, yes they could identify as monkeys. Um, well, technically, what's a monkey? Well, what's an ape? They have, they have a tail. So gorillas are apes. Yes. But not all apes are gorillas. I think yeah, got gorillas and chimpanzees are apes. And then monkeys are primates, but they're not apes. Yeah. Does a tail get involved here at some point? Well, no, they're prime apes. They're prime apes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to like the B-grade apes. They're prime. Right. As opposed to like non-prime. Oh, so they get free delivery. Oh, Yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can do this. We can add on to their... I think the delivery thing is really important. I think we got that. I think I think um, monkeys that do get free shipping are prime apes. I was going to make it... They're mon- prime, prime apes. Prime, prime apes. With a T, but yeah. we're saying it with a P. Prime apes. Because that's funnier. It, but it's terrible. It's that terrible, terrible but prime, they should be prime apes. I was going to try to make a chimpanzee... Sh- shipping joke there? That was going to be terrible. <laughs> a chimpanzee? That was pretty bad. Uh, that's terrible. Yeah, it's early. Uh, no no alcohol in this yet. Um, I don't drink. 
You don't drink? Not at all. Good for you. Yeah, Good I'm for allergic. You. That's not a have, joke. Have you tried it all? I have. Okay. I, I, um, so when I first Bad came back then. from college, I worked at a bar. Uh-huh. I was a bouncer. Uh, I still bounce sometimes, but only when I'm jogging. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I make that joke for the last 20 years. So, uh, and so we, you know, as a, as a, somebody that works at a bar, you're a semi-professional drinker anyway. Um, and I would have the weirdest reaction. Don't look at my dirty fingernails. Uh, about a week after I would drink pretty good, my fingers would start cracking like the skin on my fingers. Yeah, they would start peeling. Sure, that wasn't the drug you were doing? I didn't do I haven't done drugs in so long. <laughs> and, and occasionally, I celebrate the you know the anniversary when I stopped doing drugs because it was completely unintentional. It was called leaving college. <laughs> um, Graduation. Yeah. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> mm. I, leaving college. <laughs> I spent four years there, but that never actually comes up. <laughs> it's my dirty secret. Oh, where'd you go to school? I went to this school. Oh, what year did you graduate? Well, I was there from here until then. So anyway, it would so it would crack. And at the time, I was playing a lot of music. Like uh, I used to be a very terrible bass player, so I'd play. I was playing a lot of music, so I thought, well, maybe that's it, because it's like a week later. Uh-huh. And then uh, finally, I realized after years of this that it was it was the alcohol. So I tried like, oh, I'll just drink bourbon because that sounds fancy, mm-hmm. especially when you're 24. Oh, I'll just drink wine. I'll try this. Just I, I assumed it was like the yeast in beer, but and nothing quite worked out. It was always it always affected your fingers. Yeah. Now these days, my wife does all the drinking for us. Uh, <laughs> that's why I'm so easy to live with. The um, like occasionally I'll like feel like oh, I can have a beer anywhere there where like Miller High Life is mm. is served. I will generally order one because nobody has it on where I go. I don't go anywhere anyway. Uh, and I'll feel like, oh, I have like a beer and I'll get uh, like this much and I can feel my tongue start to swell. That's, to that's, yeah, that's an allergic reaction yeah. right there, man. And that never happened for many years yeah. of my life. Yeah. So it makes me, uh, I'm a sober prober. My wife says it's good to have a designated driver everywhere we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I want to, I'll call you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm also really lazy, so I'm probably not going to come get you. I'm so oh, sorry. Damn it. And yeah. you have a small car too. So. Yeah. <laughs> it's small. You're you're not big. Hey. <laughs> I love. Okay. All right. So weirdly, you know how they have the stickers? You guys would have a sticker with like the family on it. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. You guys do? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I know the stickers but you're talking the stickers about. stickers yeah. where it's like mom and dad. I always love when I see like huge vans that they only have one kid. <laughs> it's like, what's <laughs> the like, van just for? just give up? <laughs> like this is, this is what's going down now. Like we have two. We had twins, but we always had small cars. We've never had a problem. They don't do sports. That's it, right there. So that's you guys are hauling gear. equipment around, mm-hmm. and they don't have friends, so that makes it easy too. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, sorry, we can't fit. You can't fit any friends. You can have a friend over. You can't but have, have friends. To get rid of one of you. <laughs> so we never had a problem. So anytime I see like the huge like Odyssey, uh-huh. it's got like mom, one, dad, one kid. one kid. Like, what do you got the van for? Yeah. Maybe they're delivery people. Who knows? Well, maybe something tragic happened and they had to scrape the other kid off the thing. <laughs> a circle of the line. <laughs> they can't do that. That's so bad. <laughs> what are you doing? That's so inappropriate. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Back to the prime apes. Yeah. No. <laughs> How it goes, you know, it goes dark quick. I gotta say. Mm. That's the best stuff. Because the essence of comedy... Let me tell you what the... Is inappropriate is, right? It's the stuff that you don't want to talk about, right? Yeah, yeah, So, yeah. like, the things that... Um, like, the truth tellers, right? But it's the thing that's the most uncomfortable thing. And for most of us, you know, in America and Western society, it's death. Nobody yeah. Nobody wants to talk about death. But you can watch death over and over on television. Yeah. Yeah, well, because it's exciting that way, right? Yeah. But when you're in a, you know, when you have to deal with it, it's different. Yeah. It's a different thing. I was watching a I was watching another podcast with Joe Rogan and he was talking about how in our society how it's totally okay and legit to watch people kill each yeah. other. But it's not okay to watch people have sex. Huh. But or, it's like uh 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 
everybody or all the adults are having sex like that's something yeah. that we do but we're not actually killing people but it's okay to watch people kill people but it's not okay to watch Mm-mm. that's what if like a weird thing what if it's death when sex? you think about it <laughs> that's not a th- oh yes it is a thing you have the internet everything is a thing <laughs> it's just you don't want to talk about it <laughs> yeah. oh, that's terrible what did the Oh, you really, really do this. <laughs> I wanted to talk about deep cultural issues here. You. What did the buff? This is this is. What did the buffalo say when his kid left for college? I don't know. What did the buffalo say when his kid left for college? Bye, son. Mm, mm, that's good. That was a good one. Yeah. Fun fact. Mm. Bison are not buffalo, and we don't have buffalo in North America. Right. They're bison. They're American bison. They're American bison. Are there non-American bison? Hmm. That's why we got to build the wall. (laughs) (laughs) I can identify as American. (laughs) Uh, Are there voting bison? I don't Uh. know. (laughs) Well, so it's a, um, but they have like the hair and the beards and all that stuff and buffalo actually don't. They're like bald. So you're half bison buffalo. And bi. <laughs> <laughs> you're bi buff. You're buff and blue bison. So anyway, <laughs> I am Ito. Hi. Do you want me to talk about myself? I think, well, you know, so it's fascinating to me, right? Not was, really. We don't, about this. we don't want to know anything about anybody. It was because, uh, like, we were talking earlier about, you know, like, cultural identity and stuff, mm-hmm. right? Because, um, you know, like, the way, because I'm, Afakasi is the word in Samoan. It's, uh, I'm half Samoan and half Haole. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I did not grow up around the Samoan side of my family. My mom passed away when I was young. So when I was four, five. A f- a four, 82. Uh, and uh, so for whatever reason, I just didn't grow up around that side. I grew up around my dad, who's super, he's not super howly, but he came from, he grew up in Denver. He's a white dude, moved out here in the 50s and uh, actually had a bit of a local accent. Okay. And and, he, and spoke Hawaiian. Okay. Right? So, but I grew up on the howly side. And uh, I'm fa'apalangi, as I love to say. So you might be familiar with the term Fa Samoa. Uh-huh. It's like the Samoan way of doing things. So yeah. you know, it's Fa Samoa. This is how we do stuff. And Palangi is Haole. Mm-hmm. It means Caucasian. So Fa Palangi. So Fa Palangi, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, is that a thing or did you make that up? Somebody, I think one of my cousins was teasing me. And I was like, that's good. I'm going to use that. Because yeah. it's one of those answers, you know, like Fa Palangi. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it sounds really cultural. And you're not going to answer, ask any follow-up questions. <laughs> and if you do know Samoan... You know exactly what I mean, and you're not gonna ask a follow-up question. Like, oh, shit. He's he's like, like, oh you're fuck following me, right? <laughs> like, I, I, I always say that, um, you know, because accents, right? Because you have a very distinct accent. What is my accent? Yeah, well, I don't know. It's not, it's not quite the military accent, or right? Is it a distinct one though? But it is a distinct. Okay, there's a thing that I loved to do when I was a kid when we would travel, you know, to the mm-hmm. continent. This makes me sound so dorky, but I'd love to watch the local news because back in the '80s. All the anchors had the same accent. It's actually a specific Iowa accent. That for the, there's the, a for the news Iowa, anchors. Right. All the anchors had this Iowa now accent. They talk just like this. Right, the Tom Brokaw thing, right? Oh. And uh, and then you get a little bit of local color in like the weather or the sports guy, right? Uh-huh. And uh, and I... I was thinking of Will Ferrell. Uh, <laughs> the Ron Burgundy. The anchor man, Ron yeah, Burgundy. The, the very <laughs> distinct voice. <laughs> And you go up for no reason from time to time. But this is very serious. Or it's not. Back to you, Jim. <laughs> right? Uh, but it's, there's, a very, there's a school that teaches that. Okay. Right? Um, and that is like, it's a distinct Iowa accent. So what is the non-accent accent, right? Because I, I don't have an ethnic or like particularly Hawaii accent. I think you do. Yeah? It's not deep, but it, you... There, there's th- certain things, certain. There's certain things that re- I, I can't help, right? Yeah. And I think mostly that's actually after I came back from college. Yeah. I think before that. My wife gets on me because I don't use Olelo Hawaii. Like, I don't use any Hawaiian language when we're at home. Not, yeah, me not neither, that I speak, really. Yeah. But I do it all the time when I'm at work. You know, I'm mm-hmm. always talking about these cultural things. I, I drop into 
because you know you pop in a good like foreign phrase and somebody thinks oh he knows what he's talking about but it's also you know like there are certain concepts that like this works better the thing that i always use is the word um when you're ma'at to something right when you're familiar with it and it's just one of those things that i can't explain it in a different way i have to like use the word and kind of walk around it mm-hmm. but uh at home like i purely like the howliest howly sound that i have in my voice is what i talk to my kids and my wife and then we we'll go out you know like uh like at a, at a restaurant or something. You go, oh, thanks, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Malo. No, no. Do you find that when you travel and you go in through TSA and stuff, you have to be like super American? Or do they think you're a terrorist or something? <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I tried to get the... Because you have that exotic look where I it's know. like... It never happens to me. I don't me. know what he is. Is he Polynesian? Yeah, is he Mexican? Yeah. He's not Canadian. <laughs> It's a fake passport anyway. So. <laughs> Are you Arabian? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm always surprised. I'm uh, Persian. I, I don't get pulled over. I mean, I don't get pulled over. I don't get pulled out of line. <laughs> Which sometimes I'm like, I just got a new... Um, it's like you look so terroristy that they're just like, he can't be a terrorist. He's, he looks the part. Yeah, and then he talks. He's like... Well, I have, you know, like, like it's in the, it's early, so my voice is deep, but my natural talking voice is a little bit high, you know? <laughs> like, I've professionally lowered it a little bit, so when I'm at work, I uh-huh. sound like I'm a man. But otherwise than that, you know, like, it's easy to confuse me. <laughs> if we had a landlight in my house, you wouldn't know if one of the kids picked up or, or I did, because it's, it's naturally kind of high. Mm. And then when I start talking, they're like, oh, no, this guy's good. <laughs> this guy's fine. <laughs> he just looks weird, but he's good. When I got my new uh, driver's license... <laughs> So I have a son who is super derpy, right? So he makes these faces. And when it's time for a picture at school, he'll like put on a, a, a tie, like a bow tie and a vest, right? That's slick. Yeah, I get that. I used to think he thought he was dressing up, but I'm, now I'm pretty sure he's just, you know, like <laughs> taking the piss. <laughs> you know, like pretty sure he's just like having fun. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, okay. So when I take my new picture, I'm going to have something. And I carry... <laughs> Carry a shawl in my backpack. I want a tactical shawl. Okay. Got it at 5'11. So it's super American, right? Uh, but I use it, you know, when I would go hiking to because it keeps the sun off. And, yeah. and if it's cold, I have something. You know, I use it as a towel, all these things. Yeah, it's about as stupid as it sounds. <laughs> but it's one of the one thing I have in my backpack. It's like be prepared. My EDC, you know, my everyday carry. And uh, so I was like, oh, I'll grab this. And so I put it on and I totally look like. <laughs> Cause it's a, yeah, I look like an Arab. Um, that's, it's probably racist right there. I look like somebody that will get pulled out by TSA. Well, uh-huh. and my wife, I send the picture to my wife. She's like, you are getting <laughs> background checked the next time we fly. You know, I always used to get background checked. Like really? the, the random, the random you? screen. Yeah. They'd look at my name or something and like, what is what it's is circle uh, my name and stuff? Oh, we have a random pre-select test. Because you know, is, is short for what? Yoane. Yeah, that's not even. Or for Samoan is Yoane. <laughs> I'm not Samoan though. Yeah. It's Samoan. Samoan with the long yeah. a. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. You gotta. But Yoane is actually Greek. Oh. Oh. So you it's know, not. It's not Samoan. It's not Tongan. It's not Hawaiian because they all think they all think it's it's their own oh, name, right? But they actually missionaries brought it over. But did they bring it over as that, or did mm-hmm. they bring it over as John? Is it what John? Do you mean? It's John. Yeah, yeah. But did they bring it? So when they came, you know, like the thing like Kioki is George, like all these. And uh, some um, of those names are well, are it's disappearing. The same, it, it's the same in Greek. Yeah. Um, Ioane so it, is did it go John from in Greek, Greek to English to Hawaiian. Pretty much. Or did it go from Greek to Hawaiian? I think this just went from Greek to Polynesian. Yeah. Because uh, it went to Hawaii, Tonga, Samoa, because they all have Yoane. Yeah, yeah. Either yeah. as a first name or a last name. But we don't have any J's. Everything ends in a vowel sound. Yeah, I guess so. So. Ooh. So it went from um, Ioane, uh In Greece, it's Ioane. In Italy, it's Giovanni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the same name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. It's and then, ends up going back to the same thing. I think as as west you go, it becomes like Ian and stuff Ian's like that. It's still the same thing. Yeah, so oh. it all has its base root in as, as John in Ioane. Ah, but the Greeks spell it with an S at the end. Ioannes, but they don't pronounce Yannis. it. S. They pronounce it Yannis or Yanni, like Yanni. Yeah, Yannis. 
Like Y A N I, N I, Yanni. Like Yanni, the the guy that plays the, the is it a flute? It's the pan pipes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that weirdo. <laughs> He's good. He's got a great mustache. Yeah, but that's like the same thing, right? So why would they pull you? Why did I don't know? You because I don't I don't look white necessarily. I mean, non-white people say I'm white, right? White people say I'm not white. Huh? That's how it works, right? But I'll never be I'll never be confused as like Hawaiian because I just don't I don't look Polynesian really at all. I don't look Japanese, but I'm part Japanese. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm Scottish, as we were talking about right. before, but I, I wouldn't pass for that. I might pass for Welsh. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I was in when I was in college, <laughs> I don't know. your dark hair. Yeah, uh, and I'm short. You're um, not swarthy, but I'm hairy, so uh, I don't know. But um, when you're in college. Oh, I went to college in Nevada, Las oh. Vegas. Um, all the Mexican people and everything, they would talk Spanish to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, well, if, I, as if I knew Spanish. And I'm like, right. I don't know what you're talking well, about. Well, in America, right? Anybody south of the border is Mexican, whether they're from Guatemala or wherever they might yeah, be, right? Yeah, And And we uh, generally don't realize, like, the they're from difference all over. in, yeah. like, you get these high Spanish, you know, with a lot of actual Spanish blood. They're, they're very light-skinned and very dark-skinned, Indio. And, uh, and it's a, you know, they have the same kind of racial dynamics that we have in America, except to us, it's somebody else. So they're all the one, the same thing. Right. But I remember like, um, in Vegas, there were Mexicans who were, they looked white. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know, light, basically white, light brown hair, yeah. light colored eyes, light colored skin, and they're Mexican. So, yeah. I mean, it's, and watching like the Mexican soap operas and stuff like that, it's yeah. like, Hey, they don't look yeah. Mexican because <laughs> <You're right>. they're <laughs> high class. She's they're blonde hair, skin, right? blue yeah, eyes. Yeah. But she's speaking really good Spanish. Okay. So growing up on base then, like was there, what was the the like ethnic dynamics? Oh, so being a military brat, um, it was very mixed. Yeah. Um, mostly white and black um, families, uh, especially growing up in like the right, 80s right, and right. 90s and stuff. So a lot of my friends were, you know, between those white and black. I didn't have a whole lot of Asian friends uh, growing so up. So what did they think you were? It never came up. Yeah, yeah, right. When you have a very multicultural crew, right. nobody really cares. It never really came up. Yeah. But when they found out I was Hawaiian, actually, when they heard my name, they thought I was Native American. Yeah. Which is... Well, they would pronounce my name Iowani. Yeah. <laughs> E-O, like E-Y-O-N-I or something like yeah. that. Iowani. And how do you pronounce it? Iowani. Iowani. Yeah. Or... Because it's E O I, like just the I O is. Yeah, it's just like E O. You, I bet you get weird things though. It's like that's a weird name. It's like no, it's like Joe, but with an I instead of a J. I mean, it's not that weird. I because one of the reasons, like one of the reasons that I always knew I was going to live in Hawaii, I didn't know, but like my wife is from Montana and she moved here from New York. She'd moved every like two years from the time she was twelve. Oh, wow. And uh, on her own, not with her actual family. Like she, anyway, that's a different story. But um, within like maybe a month of dating, I told her I'm never going to leave Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And I think part of it is because in Hawaii, like ra- the racial thing, like my weird kind of vague ethnicity, it doesn't really matter. Nobody really cares. I mean, in Hawaii, we, we're interested in race for a couple of things. So we know why your hair is like that. Mm-hmm. We know what you can bring to the potluck. And uh, we well, know which jokes to make about you. And we know how much food you're uh, is expected <laughs> yeah. to be at your party, <laughs> right? Right, right, right. Like, oh yeah, oh no, no, no. So like, that was the thing. Um, my mother-in-law has a catering company, and she was telling us that um, when she hosts parties, one of the things she asks is uh, ask the party um, people is um, you know what's the racial or ethnic background of the guests that are coming? Yeah, because it it matters. <laughs> yes, right. and I mean as. <laughs> And As she knows improper or whatever that could be. It's actually legitimate because yeah. if it's a Samoan party, you got to make a lot more food. Right. If it's a Filipino party, you know that they're going to take home food afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to eat their fill and, you know, make plates and take home. If it's like a Japanese, uh, mostly party, right. They're not going to take home food. Yeah. But they're going to eat their little, their plates, you know, maybe have a little bit of food, oh, man. but they're not going to, like go and make a whole lot of takeout plates. Tell you what they get, but they're not gonna. It's a cultural thing right. for all these different, all these different. Um, what do Hawaiian people do? Types. I think it's a blend. It's a mix. 
Because uh, my but they're not gonna they're not gonna eat like because in Hawaii a ton of food. like you you put out food right when you have an yeah. informal thing yeah and my mother in law is always kind of aghast at how much food there is because she tries to apportion everything so there's nothing oh. left when she cooks anything and I'm like oh because like you cook what you have and yeah. then you eat and then you eat tomorrow and you eat the next day yeah. right and my mother in law is Greek so she cooks like uh, anytime she cooks uh, for the family stuff there's always a lot of food and it's uh, always uh, more than we can eat and we always take home or people always take home food and sometimes we have to make them take home food because they just like no no we're okay yeah. it's like no we <laughs> cooked will take a lot of food, food. take yes. home food like we cooked for you for the week like take home food i'm just looking at you now trying to figure out like what would i think because you're pretty holly looking but clearly not completely holly there i have a um i went to school in southern california and i had an uncle that lived in in uh, eagle rock i'm cuban b yeah well, people thought, like, I, I never realized, but somebody goes, oh, I thought like you were Puerto Rican because of your kinky hair. Mm. Back when I had, I had longer hair at that time. I had, you know, puffy hair like this. And, uh, um, but I, I had an uncle that was sick and I hired these uh, maids to come and clean his house. And I was in there, you know, like going through stuff. And it was uh, um, a black lady and a, and a Mexican lady. And, you know, like we're all kind of talking as the day goes on, as they're doing stuff. And um, at the end of the day, the, you know, we like kind of, kind of close, you know, talking about all sorts of different things. And the, the black lady looks at me and goes, Ito, that is the funniest name I ever heard on a white boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and now like think, hear your story, how people that are not white would be like, oh, you're white. You're not me, but you're yeah. white. It's so, like, what? You talk real good. It's like, like yeah. and like they kind of lump some Asians into like just Asian. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Japanese, the Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Koreans, you're Asian. If you're it's not like, around people like that, it's hard to distinguish, right? Because right? here in Hawaii, like you can totally d- yeah. uh, differentiate between. Well, even, you know, like even Tongan and Samoan, you can pretty tell right away. Kind of. Yeah. Do you, once they open their mouth, right? Once or they open their mouth, yeah. And, and, My Tongan know. friend is going to be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's like, hey, dude. All the uk, uk sounds, right? I mean, you are kind of the same racial it, but, it, but thing. Yeah, we can so. make the, you can, in a lot of ways, we can make distinctions. Uh, yeah. Because we're familiar, right? Yeah. I mean, if. Uh, the language is similar. The culture is similar. Yeah. Um, but the peoples are. In little... Hawaii, would we pull out the difference between Russian and Finnish? I don't know. I don't know. Can they do that in. Russia or Finnish and Swedish, yeah, because they're like right next to each other. It's yeah, like, there's no yeah, difference. Like, well, they, you know, I mean, the idea of a country is a pretty modern concept. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> get into history. Okay, there's a great story about uh, another thing of cultural identity in myself. So I got into a car accident. It was, it was, man, it was the worst. It was not the worst. Everything, everybody was fine. I think uh, I was great, um, but. Uh, I had just gotten a root canal, like an emergency root canal. And you're driving now? And yeah, it, w- it wasn't that bad, right? Uh, and so I was actually on my way to work. Is there a good root canal? Yeah, there could be worse, okay. right? So it was, it was not as bad as I thought it might have been. And okay, I was like, look. I was actually really pumped because I was like, I'm going to make it work on time. I had a root canal. I'm going to make it work on time. All right, this is good. And I get down and I was like, uh, and I'm at a stoplight over on Queen. There's a Queen and uh, a car runs a red light. Um, I have the green light, right? A car runs a red light, hits a car that was coming across from me. So the car that's headed toward me is now headed straight at me at a very low rate of speed. Mm-hmm. I'm stuck. I can't do anything. I mean, it's like mm-hmm. at that point, I, I couldn't turn or anything. I just pushed the brake harder. And he just like <laughs> me in the front. And I have to say, I was like, well, now I'm not going to be at work on time. Also, it's not my fault. I'm so excited. This is the first exit I've been in a long time. <laughs> it's not my fault. Or it wasn't my fault. <laughs> I was like, Jamie's going to be mad and happy because this time it's not me. So, um, so, you know, we go through the whole thing mm-hmm. and there's, uh, um, the, all the reports and stuff that you're quite familiar with. Uh, and so I had to go get my, uh, my police report so I could submit it to the insurance. Okay. So I go through that whole thing and I get the police report and it lists me as Caucasian, which is hilarious. So the officer, there was already cops on the scene because there was a, a traffic <laughs> accident right around the corner. Uh-huh. So within like a minute, there are three cars there. And, uh, you know, a guy takes my report and it comes back. It's Caucasian, which my son finds hilarious. <laughs> Your son's like, one of us, one of us, one of us. Right. Because my son is, you know, three quarters 
Caucasian. <laughs> and one quarter Samoan because I'm half, right? Did you guys do the DNA test? No. I don't Why really not? see a point. Hmm. Our Howley is so Because howly. you don't know. Like, well, you don't our know. Howley is so Howley that it's, you know. But don't you want to know like where from like Western Europe or Central Europe Mostly, you're from? Well, I guess. I'm not really curious. Uh, there's, there's, you know, there's other elements there too. Uh, I think they're like personal cultural heritage things. That I, I'm like, eh, I'm good. I don't really care about what's in the past. It doesn't mm. really matter that much. But the other part is the Polynesian thing is so, because it's limited on, <clears throat> um, on sample size, right? It's mostly self-reported. Yeah. So, so as the samples grow, they get better, right? Because if yeah. you're like Danish, you can get a little circle on Denmark. Yeah. But if you're a Polynesian, it's like, you're just Polynesian. Welcome to the Pacific. You're you know, in the be, islands somewhere. Could be Melanesia, right? I had a friend that's, you know, three quarters Hawaiian. And yeah. it's like it just Austronesian. Polynesian or Austronesian. Yeah, yeah. What is like, it? Like the islands around which Australia? Which includes Australia and everything else. That could be New Zealand though, right? Nah. Well, it's like, um, I think Austronesia, if I were to hazard a guess, if it's a real term that it didn't just make up. Would be um, it totally sounds me <laughs> Australia through like like uh, Malaysia and up through the corner over there. Oh wow! Because New Zealand is is next door. We always think of mm-hmm. it as next door, but they're totally separate. It's like two different continents. Yeah, and Cause, it's big because they came from the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, tradition holds, and there's some like physical evidence that the, the settlers of New Zealand of Aotearoa came from Hawaii. Came from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Not the other way around. I thought Hawaii was no. the last on the... So, actually, it's New Zealand. As far as I know, New Zealand's the last place I was settled in the Pacific. Oh, wow. Yeah, just after. Because tradition holds that they came from here. So, we're 1,200 to 2,000 years in Hawaii. Mm-hmm. That's what current science, as far as I know, stands. And I'm not sure where the settlement of uh, Aotearoa comes. But there's actually like... Um, well, you know, there's like tradition holds but a friend of mine was like there's a there's actually houses that are that seem to be made from hawaiian koa that would have been the ships in new that, zealand yeah the vessels the, that came down nice or parts of them because <clears throat> we're all one big people we're all yeah big people. and I, I i like um how uh people have seen that um hawaiians or polynesians have made it to south america yeah yeah well the the sweet potato came from and somewhere. back yeah exactly that's my point right. Like when everybody, any, whenever anybody asks like where, um, or who discovered what or whatever, it's like, no, the Hawaiians or the Polynesians did make it across the Pacific yeah. to Central America or South America because they have the sweet potato. Right. And like yeah, yeah. the sweet potato. And the sweet potato went backwards. Yeah. It yeah. came back. Everything else goes this way, but the sweet potato goes the other right. way. Right. Because the sweet potato just all of a sudden arrived and all of a sudden was there in yeah. um, Polynesian culture and yeah. stuff in their, in their diet. Everybody has it. Right? Yeah. And all of a sudden everybody has it. It's yeah. like, where did it come from? Dang like it. you can't just make that on the island. It just there's so, no trace of it being made. Did somebody like sweet potato? Yeah, I uh, a few years ago, my wife was in a conference in Oslo, so I got to hang on Oslo for a week. You know, while she's in conference, I'm just hanging around. And one of the places I got to go was the Kontiki Museum. Oh, nice! Yeah, I saw that movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was out, so it came out while we were in. Oh, cool. Norway. Yeah. And uh, I was like, ooh. I saw a preview for it at the Kontiki Museum and it had all the English parts of the movie. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, let's go see this. And so we go to see it and it's all in Norwegian except for the parts where he's in like New York and they're speaking English. It's not subtitled or no. anything. <laughs> they have no idea what they're saying. Yeah, but you know, like I have a pretty good idea of the story. I know the story and I think we can get it. <laughs> you know, sure. Uh, but um, You mean they didn't all speak English when they were writing the Kontiki for us? <laughs> yeah. I think that's yeah. historically inaccurate. <laughs> but, I mean, Klingon speak. Klingon. I guess Klingon speak Klingon. Do you speak Klingon? Well, no, I do not. Are you a Trekkie? Uh, the appropriate term is Oh, you didn't trekker. say no. No. No, because if you're a Star Wars guy, it's called Trekkie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you I a Star call, Wars guy? Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a Star Wars guy. Okay. For purposes of this conversation. Okay. So we'll get so back to I got Oslo. To, so I got to go to the... The Tor Heyerdahl Museum. Uh huh. Yeah, it's not Thor, it's Tor. Tor. Yeah. So it's not Thursday as Tor's, Tor's Day. It is. Tor's Day. Totally. I always call it Thor's Day. Yeah. Because it just sounds better than Thursday. Thor's Day. Thor's Day. Oh, I grew up on Marvel Comics, so, mm. you know, all Vikings sounds Shakespearean to me. So, anyway, I get to go to the, they actually have the Quantiki mm-hmm. and see all this stuff. Mm hmm. And he's this huge, you know, national hero, Thor Heyerdahl, this guy. 
And of course, growing up in Hawaii after Hokulea, Tor Heyerdahl is kind of a joke. You know, it's like mm-hmm. everybody's like, that guy's a tool. He like he thinks that people float on an accident. It was like, I mean, it's hard to imagine a time when people didn't think that people got here on purpose. Because basically, now, yeah, now when Ho- after after, after Hokulea all, sailed, right, right it's right. the only people that floated into Polynesia on accident were Norwegian. Everybody else was doing it on purpose. Kind of probably, yeah. yeah. And it would have been back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. So I get, well, I mean, like back in the, back in his time, because that was after just after World War II, right? So it's it before. The, so it's the 30s. I think it was 30. I thought it was after World War II. No, it was, it was before. Are you sure? Because in the movie, there was all dun, like veterans. Dun, dun. Were they? They were veterans of the First World War. Well, that would put them in the 20s. Yeah, it's like the 20s and 30s. I think the book was written. It but was they wouldn't published have... like 34, 36. Okay. If only we had devices we carried around with us that could give us all the answers. Dun, dun, dun. We'll leave it for later. Um, he Because he continued to do work after the war. Okay. But I'm, I'm pretty sure. But like back in that time, like people didn't think highly of Pacific Islanders. People didn't highly think of anybody that weren't white. <laughs> Pretty much true, right? Yeah. Pretty, pretty true. It was, it was completely racist in, when, that, in that frame of mind. Uh, but when you look back on it now, it's like, no, I mean, the Polynesians could do that because that was like, what else are they going to do? They right. just sit on an island and then their island overpopulates. Well, we got to leave. Yeah. Or you venture know, out. Or, depends on what it is, right? Right. Or they were following the aliens or I don't know, <laughs> ancient alien thing. Uh, like, nobody, there's a lot of reasons why people move, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the reasons, I mean, one of the interesting things about like, America and the Pacific is it's a matter of borders and frontiers, right? Yeah. So once you run out of or bison, you know, when the western borders by, <laughs> son, once you run out of the western border, you know when it goes from Kentucky all the way to through Nevada to California. We yeah, still you're over the Appalachians, go. and then yeah. it's just the plains. It's like, oh, we'll go to Hawaii. Let's do it. Is it's totally crazy, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something that's I think people have been talking a lot more about recently. Because when I say that Hawaii became a uh, U.S. territory in 1898 to people, mm-hmm. if they're from Puerto Rico, they go, what? I go, yeah. <laughs> when did Puerto Rico become a territory? 1898. Same year? Yeah. It's all the it's all the Spanish-American War. Oh, I didn't know Hawaii was uh, no, yeah, involved okay. with the, so everybody the ceding of land. And, well, it wasn't the, the ceding of land, but because the United States got the Philippines. Right. Cuba? So, Cuba yeah. and Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So, uh, oh, Puerto Rican, Puerto Rican. I can say that. American Samoa mm-hmm. and Hawaii become part of the U.S. in the same thing. Okay. So, I mean, everybody knows, and Hawaii, everybody knows that there's an overthrow in 1893, mm-hmm. right? But the uh, but we're not annexed until 1898. So that was the Republic of Hawaii period, because in 1893, America's like, hey, we're not an empire. That's like the old European people, those those jerks over there. In 1898, we're like, Empire! In 1898, we're like, hey, you know, dun, we're dun, good now. Dun, 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 we had the Spanish-American dun, dun, War, dun. so we'll take that. Yeah, yeah, that's good, that's good. We'll take that, take that, take that. Didn't work out so well. Do you know about the Guano Islands? Guado? Guano? Guano. Guano. Ooh. Is that like the batshit islands? Yes. So Guano. Oh, this is crazy. This stuff is crazy. It's all connected, right? So in the late 19th century, um, like the farmland is getting uh, kind of overused in America, this kind of industrial or, you know, pre-industrial farming, but like where the soil is getting all used up. Mm -hmm. So they need something to reinvigorate the soil and it's guano, right? And so there are these islands with deposits of bird and bat poop. The guano. Oh, uh, Naru. Naru. Mm-hmm. All over, but all over the, the Pacific. The islands of Naru. Yeah, and, yeah. And, in, and in the Caribbean, right? So mm-hmm. all these little isolated places where nobody's been around. They go into the caves and they dig all this stuff out. It's very labor intensive. It's terrible, terrible work. Nitrogen. They're looking for yeah, because yeah. it's nitrogen rich. Yeah, yeah. So then, uh, so that is one of the reasons the Guano Islands Act is how America ends up in the Pacific. So Hawaii the, becomes part of America because of guano. To help replace soil or help During invigorate soil. During that brief moment when that's the most important thing is to reinvigorate the soil. Now, what ends up reinvigorating the soil that doesn't, so we don't need guano anymore? Mm. Fertilizer, right? Manure, so, the bison. Chemical fertilizer. Oh, chemical fertilizer. This gets even crazier uh-huh. because the guy that makes the chemical fer- fertilizer is a German guy. He's a Jewish German guy. And he makes uh, also, as a byproduct, I don't even know if this is right, but he does this. Uh, but it's the, interesting. You tell it really well. It's the gas. It's the it's a poison gas. 
What kind so of poison gas? The poison gas that's used in the First World War. So you got chlorine, maybe? Yeah. Or um, mustard? No. The, it's, like, it's not the mustard gas, but it's the other stuff. Chlorine. And then it ends up getting into... Uh, oh, this is terrible. I can't tell the rest of the story. Because the guy that ends up replacing guano is also the guy that creates Zyklon B. Zyklon B? Zyklon B. Zyklon it's B. The, it's the, um, the gas in the... Um, yeah, in a terrible, terrible way. In chambers and stuff. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh, he just went dark on that. Yeah, yeah. It's like when I realized where I was going, I was like. <laughs> but, you know, like in, in, you know, with our devices in our pockets, it's easy to think that we're connected to everything all the time. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy when you realize it was always like that. It's just that the, the time frames were a little bit longer. The distances were harder to traverse, right? You but, mean you're finding information? Well, like, uh, like the way that you know, the Spanish American war affects the history here in Hawaii. Yeah. The way that that guano, like, you know, like depleted farmland in Iowa affects the history of Hawaii. Mm. Like where it's all kind of comes through together. I mean, you know, like when you graduated, did the girls wear holoku? Um, at KS, what do you guys wear? Uh, for graduation, the girls would wear the white mu'umu and the boys would wear just the dress whites, the oh, yeah, white yeah. shirt, and uh, white uh, pants. But the the, holu, the the dresses that go from the collar all the way down, all the way down. So that's that's the holuku, right? I believe I don't. Which in do they have open arm sleeves? I don't think they. Yeah, because because when I graduated at Punahou, <clears throat> which was the same year, uh, I think they wore the holuku. The girls, it, it's the weirdest thing, because that's a New England dress, right? That's a New England missionary style dress. Mm-hmm. Uh, the goes from the collar all the way down to the floor, all the way down to the, to past your wrist. Um, and it's considered traditional formal attire in Hawaii, right? Mm-hmm. Sorry well, it's like the, the gentleman with the dress whites and the sash around the stomach. It's like, I don't know where that came from. I, I, I don't know either. Alfred Apaka, I'm pretty sure. No, <laughs> but like, cause that's what we think of, right? It's like the Waikiki entertainer, the all whites with the red sash. Yeah. 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 And the big carnation lay. But it wasn't like a That's Hawaii. An indigenous flower. It didn't come from Hawaii, right? Because we didn't do that. We don't, uh, didn't have button-up shirts, right? You know, it had it's to one come of those somewhere. things where if we find out more about that, we're going to like, oh, that's terrible. Yeah, because like what would a Hawaiian guy like just voluntarily wear a sash around his stomach? I don't know where the sash I, I don't comes know. from. Anyways. <laughs> but no, I mean, it's... Because it. oh. in fact, mu'u means to cut, right? Mm. So mu'u is they would cut off the sleeves and the neckline and oh. the hemline a little bit. So you get your mu'umu from the holuku. But then maybe you, it wasn't holuku that the girls wore. Maybe it was mu'umu. I'm sure I'm sure one of my uh, female classmates will post on this and be like, no, it, you did. Not, you're wrong. You don't you remember see, that. Like, like, I don't remember anything. Like it looks like a New England style missionary dress. And that's what sure. it is, right? So it's like all these things. And in Hawaii, you wouldn't think of that at all. Because it's hot. Right. It's like, why would you wear long sleeves? Right. Weirdos. But if you have like really good <laughs> wool, it's it's wicking. Wicking wool. Wicking wool. Wicking wool. But I think that our understanding, I mean, it, it to me, that kind of connects to our understanding of eth- of ethnic, eth- ethnicity, heritage, whatever it might be, right? Like uh, our different sensitivities. You know, I talked a little bit about those local newscasts, right, earlier. Mm-hmm. And the thing, when I go now, when I come across that, the thing that blows my mind is that when a Spanish name comes up, they do a really good job <laughs> wherever you are in America. Like they they go out of their way to pronounce it correctly. Well, I don't even know if it's going out of your way anymore, right? But Martinez. once you're used to it, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when I was going to school in Southern California, you know, back in the '90s, it was like a fifty-fifty shot, and that's in Southern California, yeah, right, where you probably have a, a Latino Latina anchor person, yeah, who's doing that Iowa accent. But, you know, like beyond them, like everybody else is like Castaneda or, you know, like you're lucky to get anything. And now like, like oh, that's a, that's an N-A. And they know. Yeah. It's a, like, it's, a, it's a wavy N. It's not the hard N. Right. Well, in Hawaii, we have a similar thing with the language as it's been revived over the last 30 years. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, there used to be this place out on the west side called Miley. But most people will say Maili. Well, most people I know. Well, what is it? Is it Miley or Maili? It's Maili. Because you have the the uh, diacriticals, of course. You know, oftentimes we let the people who live there and are of the culture dictate whatever they want, right? Yeah. To make their own choices, but well, because generally it, it is a language, and language has always been um, fluid, right? 
alive dynamic can change, right? So, so I, uh, one of my earlier podcasts, I was asking my buddy, um, how do we know today what actual Hawaiian language sounded right. like? Are right. we just making shit up? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. we, uh, I mean, we have we kind of lost Hawaiian. Well, we know how it was spelled, right? Right. Uh, um, the so as far as the pronunciation, like there's, yeah. there's different things. I think. Um, and then it's like. Obviously, since we're an island nation, or we were an island nation, those different islands, they couldn't have spoken yeah. the same dialect, right, right. the same accents, and stuff like that. Cause Even now. Yeah, I mean, English across the United States, is there are different accents, depending where you live, right? That is one of the fascinating things to me, too, is the idea that, because um, once everything's codified, mm-hmm. right, and a lot of our, uh, you know, I mean, I can say this, but I don't speak Hawaiian, right? But a lot of the knowledge comes out of the published materials. Mm-hmm. So once you have that break, then you're kind of recreating or you're taking the sources that you have. Yes. Right. So we end up with University of Hawaii, right? Where where it's very distinctly, these are the rules, these are the ways things are pronounced. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, like colloquially in general, right? I mean, now if you meet people from Nihau or, or Kauai people, where it's sometimes a T or a D sound instead mm-hmm. of a K. Whereas, you know, for most people that learn University of Hawaii from books and stuff, we have these book ways of saying things. Right. So like would a Hawaiian speaker from Oahu um, think that a Hawaiian speaker from Ni'ihau, back in the past, yeah, would the Ni'ihau people be like the rednecks? Yeah. Like just the country bumpkins that are talking <laughs> well, know, right? completely yeah, different yeah. kind of Hawaiian than they were talking. Like the Oahu or the Big Island Hawaiian was proper. I don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. We can't go back in time and find out. Yeah, yeah. But, but sure. I mean, I think totally. I mean, you know, even today, if I talk to somebody from up country Maui, I'm going to get trouble for that. Like, oh, they're speaking words that I know, but I cannot quite, you I know, can't what, put them together. Almost anywhere you get into people where there's a heavy pigeon dialect, even if, yes. they, even if they code switch, where they don't speak it all the time, but suddenly they're talking to their cousin who grew yeah. up down the street, then it's like, ba, 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 ba. And it's just a different sound, and it's not necessarily going to be. Yeah, well, I mean, even in Spanish, because um, my grandmother, when she would speak Spanish, I could not understand a lick of what yeah. she said, even though I took Spanish um, through schooling and stuff like that, because she would just bra, 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 like talk like a machine gun. And she grew up in? Puerto Rico. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. So her family and everything was still in Puerto Rico. She um, went to Brooklyn, New York, and yeah. I think met my grandfather there. Um, and the Spanish you learned was in? Was traditional... Um, Actually, when I first started learning Spanish, uh, it was from a Spanish teacher from Spain. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so like it, so it was very uh, European type of uh, Spanish right. with different L's and stuff like that. Where they Valencia, Valencia, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they the Castilian they style. They use their tongue differently. They they talk with a lisp. My mother in law is a retired uh, Spanish Espan- language Espan- teacher, yeah. and she's very you know, poodle about her Spanish. Mm. Right? It's very Castilian. So my wife has a uh, very proper Castilian accent, uh-huh. but she doesn't remember a lot of language. So we were in Mexico and people would, you know, like she could ask a question or something and you're like, where are you from? Your accent is amazing. It's weird. And she's like, yeah, but I only have three words. We bought up as pequeño, right? Yeah. Like it was, it, so. It's like even, even. That colloquial. What I, yeah. Cause what I learned is like Cubans don't speak like Mexicans do who right. don't speak like Guatemalans right, right, do right. who don't speak like Chileans do. Um, I won't go to Brazil because they speak completely they speak, different. What are they talking yeah. about? Yeah. Portuguese. Portuguese. Boadil. But it, as we go, I think there's a lot of stuff that we um, we learn and we infer. But the language thing is really it's really interesting. I mean, I, mm-hmm. my wife did a, um, she taught a class for uh, Niihau teachers. So it was out in, uh, out on Kauai. Mm. And uh, when they were doing formal stuff, you know, like kind of presentational things, even in Hawaiian, they would t- speak Hawaiian that we would recognize that kind of university oh. Hawaiian. And then they would turn to each other and just rapid fire talk. And I was like, those are not sounds we know. So they're, talk- they're speaking a different Yeah, because it's dialect, dialect, right? So mm-hmm. there's like shh and chit and all these things. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. I and guess uh, it's like someone who's speaking English in like a heavy pigeon accent and then going to school and speaking proper English. Right. And it's like but they can turn it on and off kind of thing. And once you try to codify those those less formal, right? Yeah. A friend of mine uh, from Louisiana, she would say, you know, if I oh, see, so it's Louisiana. She doesn't, have, she doesn't have she doesn't have a heavy accent. She doesn't have an accent at all, as far as I could hear. Does she say Louisiana? Yeah. Really? Oh, it's like Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah, no, she doesn't. She doesn't do the da 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 da. But she would say, you know, if you walk into 
of the house uh-huh. at two o'clock in the afternoon. And my mom says, Jeet. I know what she's meaning. Jeet? Right? Jeet. How would you spell that? But you can tell. It's just after lunch. Jeet. G-E-E-T. Yeah. And what is that? Jeet. I don't know what you're talking about. Jeet. Jeet. Okay. Did you have lunch? Jeet. Oh, G? Right. There's all these. I'm a kind of person that says G? wouldn't. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't. Or y'all. You, you I don't y'all. say y'all. Y'all is kind of easy. Y'all is easy. But wouldn't, you know, like they're the things that when we see the word, we, we pronounce it this way. Yeah. But I if remember, you were to write it down, it's like I wouldn't even recognize what yeah. I just said. I remember growing up, I used to, uh, I would use the word ain't a lot. Yeah. And my dad would always be like, you can't use ain't. Don't use ain't. It's not in the dictionary. It is now though. <laughs> Sorry. It's, it ain't. So there are the three, this is something I learned recently. Not that I know anything about anything, but there's the academic kind of language, yeah. right? The highfalutin kind of stuff. Yeah. Highfalutin is not academic language. Yeah. And then there's a colloquial, which is the kind of the day-to-day speak. And then there's the vulgar, which I guess technically is stuff that's not in the dictionary. But that's, you know, like we use a lot of that. They're expanding the, the dictionaries, though. The dictionaries are containing a lot more slang and stuff. <laughs> there's so, we were playing Scrabble the other day, and I pulled out the dictionary. Oh. And I was looking, I can't remember what word it was, but it was, it was a F, F something. And I turned the page and the header is the F word. It's, it's fuckhead. It's a legit word, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally, right? I mean, di- <laughs> language is the ultimate democracy because definition is dictated by usage, right? Correct. So, if, so now it literally means figuratively. Mm-hmm. And it kills me, but it's true. Literally, it's figurative. I literally... Blew my brains out when I heard that. Yeah, because because English cussing is is kind of funny. Yeah, like um, I was watching this this com- comedian. Um, he was a foreigner. I forget where he was from, but he was talking about how he, when he was learning English, um, he found the word shit to be the weirdest word because you can use it on all right. kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, like yeah. if you are shit, you're bad. Yeah, if you're the but shit, if you're the shit, <laughs> you're good. <laughs> and if you're a shit. Then you're lazy, <laughs> right? So right. And it's all context and all these different right. things. If you take a shit, you're pooping. But if you get your shit, you're picking stuff up. Uh, I gotta get my shit. If you get your shit together, you're organized. Yeah, it's all different shit. Or you get you're trying to get organized. I have to get my shit together. He got his shit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and the. And why is that? I don't it's know. A, and it's if you a, say no shit, <laughs> you're saying, oh, really? Or that's obvious. Some shit. Some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, sometimes it's a verb. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a noun. And if you dig up some shit, it's actually gaining information. Gleaning Hopefully. information. Hopefully. <laughs> could just be... You should have dug the post somewhere else. All right. Anything, anything else? On the shits? On the shits. Yeah, if you have the you shits. You have the shits. Yeah. That's not the good things. No, that's not a good that's not a good thing. That's after you eat uh, Taco Bell. Um You can be a piece of it. Yeah. You can be a piece of shit, which means you're an asshole. Which does not mean that you're an actual butt. That's it. okay. So asshole is a good word. Because in Hawaiian, right, colloquially in Hawaii, we uh-huh. use the word okole, uh-huh. which we use it to refer to your backside. But, but okole is a specific piece of your backside. It's actually the whole. Yeah. And once you know that, you're like, oh, man. Oops. Yeah. And that's that's just because we know more, right? Mm-hmm. To go, get back to the language, right? Like uh, I have a friend at work. You know, we have a whole, uh, there's a bar where uh, most of the bartenders and servers love Hawaii. They speak Hawaiian. Uh, and one of the guys was listening to this old interview from Larry Kimura back in the 70s. You know, one of the, one of the ways to bring back a language is Larry did all these interviews with people that spoke mm-hmm. Hawaiian. And my friend was saying how the words they're using back then are different than the ones you'd use now. Sure. Because all that stuff, the language that got passed through, you know, through living interaction was mostly... You know, vulgar colloquial, right? It's on the lower side. Mm-hmm. Whereas when you go back and you do all these formal study, you go back into the source documents, go back to the newspapers, whatever's written, letters, all these kinds of stuff, then you end up with, oh, we have a better understanding. My um, 
my uncle is one of the premier uh, pronunciation experts of Hawaiian in the world, right? Uh, Puke Nogumeyer. And not to speak for him, but uh, he's also the voice of the bus, right? So, Kapi Olani. Oh, okay. Right? Vineyard, that low voice that comes on. Watch, Kino. watch your step. Yeah. So he's the so he's the pronunciation guy. The bus is lowering. And one of the things that he said after doing those pronunciation mm-hmm. recordings on the bus for twenty years, bus drivers have really good Hawaiian pronunciation. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have to listen to this. So nobody's saying Kapi Olani. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Kinao versus Kinao. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Let alone, you know. Kinao or is it Kinao? Because it's always said Kinao. It's got, there's no Kina. There is? Yeah. Mm. Do you Kino. think they should put Okinas in the street names? Yeah. On the green, yep. black or thingies? We need. We need. We need. Oh, is it Hanauma Bay or Hanauma? Hanauma. It is. Yeah. Or is that just you think? Well, because do, do, they don't have that video anymore. I can't remember. I mean, it, it could go both ways, right? Hanauma. Well, you know, the, uh, and of course, you know, our, my understanding is not great and our understanding changes over time mm. as a, as a people, but like you walk through the word, right? So Hanauma would make sense because there's no diphthongs. There's no, uh, mm-hmm. no mind. I don't even know what a diphthong is. I gotta be honest with you. I said it, but I'm like, I'm not hundred percent sure. I think it's when you have two vowels that come did you, together. Did you say a that. diphthong? A diphthong like as opposed should, to being change dipped the, they should change into the your thong. That. So that's when two vowels come together, I think. So in Hawaiian, it's it's a matter of walking through, right? So yeah, it's, like, it does sound like a piece of underwear. A dip Hanauma, hanauma. The well, A and the U are, di- are, are separate but mm, equal. It's like my last name. People don't um, a lot of times get my last name, Ke'ehu. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. With two E's together with an Okina in between, right? Right. Um, but a lot of Hawaiians that were growing up and, and uh, going through Kamehameha, they was like, it shouldn't it be Ka'ehu? I don't know. I didn't why? make it. I don't know why. Because of, because because you're light. <laughs> the uh, no, I, I I guess they were talking about linguistically in Hawaiian. Oh. It should be a ka instead of a k. Well, I, I don't know. It depends on depends on usage. Depends on context. Depends okay. on what it actually means. Sometimes, especially with names, we don't 100 percent know exactly what it was mm-hmm. right, that came through. I mean, a great example is Molokai, right? Because Molokai, everybody has Molokai. This is the formal way that we say Molokai. Sure. And if you pronounce it differently, you must be wrong. But a Molokai, they say Molokai. And they have a reasoning behind it. And of course, in Molokai, you know, it's a, there is a significant portion of the population with Hawaiian ancestry, right? Mm-hmm. So then they'll say that, oh, it's because it's a reference to the waters. The Which is Kai. Waters, right? Not Kai. Yeah. Yeah. And and they'll, they'll have a whole thing that they say. That being said, you know, Hawaii, Lanai. I had a whole discussion about Hawaii, Hawaii Island, because. Now, yeah, I noticed you say Hawaii, not Hawaii. It goes back and forth. Right, because even the W, it's like. So one of my things was, how do we know the W was a V sound? One of the things that we go back to is uh, um, during the early, because uh, there's no written language in Hawaii, right, before Western mm-hmm. Contact. So one of the definite things you can use are the ship's logs and the correspondence with the sailors as they came through, or the, those uh, those ship crews, mm-hmm. because they spell things in different ways. Sure. Because they're just going off the sounds that they hear, as opposed to, you know, post... Um, and they've done that, like, across the United States, across the world, right. throughout... So as opposed to the post uh, migration and everything. Where it had been codified into, these are the sounds we're going to make with these letters, right? Yeah. Like, you might be familiar with, uh, what is it, Atuai? Mm-hmm. Atuai, you know the kingdom of Atuai? Yes. Right, because he's using a separate spelling from those, so you get the, all these weird ones. There's Hawaii. Oh, that's where it came from. So there's one place uh, where Hawaii, Hawaii was O W H Y E E Hawaii. Oh, what? O W H Y E E for Hawaii. It was Hawaii. So without even an H. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. But of course, when we're looking at coming into some place where we're not to the language, mm-hmm. it's always going to be kind of weird to our ear. Yeah. Let alone these, you know, very bright and erudite and, you know, understanding white ships, captains, and crews that were coming in to like totally just kind of make up their own stuff. out and like, hey, I'm just interested in what you guys have to talk about, right? <laughs> like, no, no, no. This is how you say this now. Yeah. And this is my flag and you belong to me now. So like you can see that a lot with like at Ellis Island yeah. with a lot of right, the, right. the European immigrants coming over. 
Well, they just would say the name to the person with the legislate or with the ledger, and yeah. the person would just write it as it is. Because um, my wife's uh, family coming over from Greece, they're the Georgios or Yorio. Yeah. And as they came at different times, they would say their name, Giorgio or Yorio, and it would get spelled completely uh, different. Uh, and so, so they, they would all, and they all would actually, uh, event, eventually migrated down to um, Tarpon Springs in Florida. And um, they had this, they had different spellings of their last name, even though they're the same family. Did anybody want to bring it back together? I don't know. I mean, that's only, it's not a hundred years ago, right? Ellis Island. Mm-hmm. That is a hundred years ago. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 1800s yeah. and stuff like that. So, you mean bring back Ellis Island? No, the bring back the name to all oh. codify it as one. They're like, I, I we're good. Know. I don't know. I think by now it's it's kind of splintered off, and you have Giorgios and Yordios. And then and then wherever you and people end up in America, they would change sometimes as well. I mean, yeah. I went to school with a, a guy that had a a um, Arabic last name, I think Arabic, and then they changed it to something that was way less. Uh, the, and, the, you know, so there is there is. A, academic work and stuff that's done about how these things are done. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's the bizarre part, right, is that if somebody did the work to decide that these were the letters we're going to use from the Roman alphabet to pronounce your non-Roman la- romance language, right? Yeah. And it's changed over time. And understanding has changed over time, too. Um, when you travel, I mean, if you go up to, uh, I have family in Montana and in the Pacific Northwest and up there, you know, some of the First Nations, the, the indigenous mm-hmm. people there like the way that they've approached language has been post that it's been more recent so they have all these diacritical marks right which make it very difficult for me as an outsider to try to pronounce it um whereas with, with hawaiian you know maybe if we had a, if the approach had been different back in the day or there's a different understanding we might have gone into more fine-tuned detail like that but we don't mm-hmm. have any clicks or pops in polynesian language. thank so, god yeah so that makes it a little bit easier but there might have been some different understanding. That was that was that was offensive. The gods must be crazy. No, that was offensive. What you just said. What? Yeah, the, the words that you use. Are oh like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was cussing in um in oh god Swahili. Like, no, it was not Swahili. It was a no. It was a different dialect. This was a Zulu dialect. <laughs> now we're gonna sit here and think about the gods must be crazy. <laughs> when when where? But yeah, that was a so, great funny movie. Oh my god, they got to bring stuff like that back. Do they? Do we? Well, like they have, um, you know, things. the Hanaho Picture Show at, at Ward. Yeah. Oh, they they show some great old movies. We went to go see the Three Amigos. Oh, really? It's so oh. funny. I hadn't seen that movie since I was a kid. I probably haven't either. I still use stuff from that movie all the time. Up here, up here, yeah. up here. <laughs> the Singing Bush. Yes, the Singing Bush. Yeah, there's some stuff. There's 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 a lot of funny stuff. Um, well, that's how everybody learned the word plethora. A plethora. Yeah. Would you say I have a plethora of piñatas? <laughs> it's a <Yeah>. sweater. <laughs> this is a, you know, I think there's a funny. Um, we just have a whole talk on like funny movie quotes. But there's a. I think our understanding has changed. I mean, it's really crazy because I was talking about some TV show. Oh, what was it? I was like, does that hold up? Like, can I still watch that? There are things that we watched. It's like, oh no, this guy is creepy. Okay, here's what happened. One of the things that happened. I, I watched Ghostbusters with my kids. Ghostbusters was my favorite movies when I was a kid. Uh-huh. Favorite movies. And you know, Bill Murray is this icon and hero for everybody. And both my kids are like, that guy's kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh man, yeah, he totally is. Yeah, like you know, what was what was like you know playfully hitting on somebody is now like, oh no, yeah, no, she doesn't want that. He's being kind of weird. Yeah. Well, like, the other one, other eighties movie, um, Back to the Future. Yeah. Like Marty McFly, but he's friends with like this, uh, <laughs> old nuclear physicist who's been disgraced or something. Yeah. What's wrong with that? And everybody's okay with it. Like he's just yeah, best yeah. friends with this dude. Doesn't say how they met. Doesn't say why he's involved with you know whatever the scientist is doing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally okay with the friendship though. How do you think they met? I don't know. That is, that's a weird because his kid's in high school, right? Yeah, he doesn't have a job or anything. Well, does he work for Doc Brown? He could. I don't know. Because he helps out. See, that would have made sense if Doc Brown. It could have been, you know, Big Brother's big, uh, you know, Big Brother's big. Well, sisters. if he was like an assistant or something, he's like that. mentoring him, mm-hmm. right? 
Because he he's a, you know he could have been because in the beginning of the movie he's turning on all the speakers and right. stuff. At, was that at Doc Brown's place? Yeah, I think yeah. it was. Yeah, because the, the dog, the big was, speaker, the dog was there too. Einstein, Einstein, the mechanical dog um, yeah. food thingy. Or he wasn't there. The dog wasn't there because it filled up with food. Right. Because he was doing the experiment with it. With Doc. Yeah. And then, yeah, he blasted the... So maybe he was there... Um, Helping out. Learning about stuff. And I don't know. Maybe he's, you know, like, you know, it's a wellness check. That is that is an insane. There's, there's a story there. We all have weird relationships. I think the funny, the weird part is that there must be some relationship between Doc Brown and Marty's parents. <laughs> We can we can delve into this. We'll take a deep dive. I don't know because if there was any scene that had the two or them talking about Doc Brown or you know, because there's always you know uncle or somebody, but you don't have Doc Brown with the parents yeah. in any scene that I can think of. No, uh, well, yeah, <laughs> it's very interesting. I think there's lots of stuff that we don't have to know about. Yeah, I don't think it's necessarily weird that Marty McFly is hanging out with Doc Brown. Okay. I would think it weird if my son were doing that though. Like what's going on? Why? When I look I back, mean there'd have to be like a legitimate job thing right, going right, on. Right, right, right. There would have to be something. For it for it to have a a minor with a with an adult. There's gotta be something else. Mm-hmm. But it's not necessarily unsavory. Right. I think of I might always think of when I was in college or high school, like the weird people that I hung out with. I mean just within my age group, right, within my peers, like people that would never, like, I hung out with who? You did what? You used to go to what? Really? Because <laughs> in retrospect, it's like there was nothing we had in common. But you're... I, I would, in high school, I would hang out with kids from Waianae and Nanakuli. Yeah. Who were totally Hawaiian yeah, yeah. and totally talk pigeon. And for some reason, I would hang out. I got along better with them. I guess it's because they were seen as, like, outsiders from the school. Uh. And I was always obviously an outsider from the schools. So I really? don't know. We kind of just gelled. I went to Puno, so I don't know how your guys' intercultural things <laughs> were. Well, I was. A, yeah. I, I like Puno, though. I, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, yeah, I got two kids there. But Wait, so how were you an outsider in the group? How did that? At, at Kamehameha? Yeah. Oh, because I was a military brat. And I didn't know Kamehameha existed until wow. I was in eighth grade and taking the test. Oh, man. Yeah. And were you here when you took the test? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you guys yeah. already come back. Yeah, we were living. Uh, we were living on Hickam. Uh, uh, yeah. So I was. I mean, growing up was always either going to public school or private school in, in the Philippines, because uh, we lived in Manila for three years, and um, I never had an abundance of Hawaiian culture put on me. Uh-huh. It was always American culture, military right, 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 right. Um, Which is very, type of culture, because yeah. that's what I lived in. Right. Right. Um, so, and it's defined also partly in contrast to the surrounding. Yeah. So, so going to Kamehameha was too. a complete uh, culture uh, shock for me. So like Imua, you know how I pronounce that? Imua. <laughs> I still remember that. Imua. That was horrible. And, then, and you couldn't live it down for four years. Yeah, no, I couldn't. <laughs> That's the Imua guy. <laughs> the, he said Imua. Because one of the football players, cause, so my mom signed me up for the football team. Um, before freshman year. Uh-huh. So after in between eighth grade and ninth grade, right? Um, so I basically got thrown into the football team, not knowing anybody, not even going to the school. Or I was, um, and I was going to go to the school, but I wasn't in summer school or anything yet, yeah. so I didn't know anybody. And one of the plays was, you know, Imua left or Imua right, yeah, yeah, yeah. and some numbers attached to it. But yeah, I couldn't pronounce it to save my life at that time. And so yeah, I run I run to the huddle to to give the quarterback the play from the coach on the sideline because yeah. that's how we do it. We use runners back yeah. and forth. And Emua uh, left. <laughs> what? Did you have a, Did you have a military accent? Um, I don't think I do. Did you? I mean, was there? I might have. I I, yeah. I had a totally just legit Caucasian white American accent. Whatever that is, right? Whatever that is. <laughs> So, huh? So mm. then, how do you see yourself? Uh, I mean, this is a weird question. But then, how do you define yourself as a Hawaiian? Is that part of your identity? Is that mm. I, 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 I put this? In, I'll put this in context because you know, I, as being Samoan but not having grown up around that side, 
I, it's, it's intrinsically part of who I am. I always knew it was there, but yeah. I don't understand it completely. Yeah. And I'm in, in the same some boat. ways. There's a lot of stuff where I'm like, I, I edge in, but I don't want to overstep and I don't want to. Yeah. I mean, there's a fa palangi, right? Yeah. So it's like, it gives me a way to be, to have access to the culture without, with also defining myself as not being, uh, a practitioner or a participant, right? Right. So, I mean, I'm not a practitioner. I didn't like, um, wasn't involved in the language, didn't really learn the language much, um, didn't do any of the cultural dancing, didn't really do hula or anything. The only Hawaiian singing I did was for song contest, that uh, kind of thing. And then after high school, I went to the mainland. So uh, even distanced myself even further. But then I came back. Um, so I think of myself as more of a progressive Hawaiian. Um, I definitely see myself as an American first yeah. and foremost. Just just growing up, moving all right, across right, the right. country yeah. and being involved in the military, right. in a military family, that's just how I was raised. Yeah, that's the culture. Yeah. And then, um, you know, Hawaiian after that. Uh, that's, that's interesting. That's cool. So I still have pride in, you know, being Hawaiian and taking care of the land and I want what's best for um, the people, the state, Um I'm for sovereignty, kind of how yeah. um, the Native Americans have it in, you know, in the mainland where they have their own geographical areas where they can self-govern. Right. I'm totally for that. Um, but I, I'm not, I'm realistic in that, you know, the United States is not going to leave Hawaii alone. I mean, it's, it's one of the states, you know, there's, there's no way that it's going to, they just, they're going to pack up their military and leave. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I really, yeah. I mean, it seems it seems to be a, a fantastical, like science fiction idea, speculative yeah. idea. And I can't imagine either. But and there's too many residents here that are not Hawaiian yeah. that are residents of Hawaii that are just going to stay. Right. Um, you're talking about you know all the the Filipinos have been here for generations, the Japanese have been here for generations, the Chinese have been here for generations. But sovereignty doesn't mean that we we reset the population. Correct. Right. I mean, it's but, easy for me to say as a non-Hawaiian. Yeah. But I mean, for for them <laughs> to say that, out, right? Yeah. For, you know, some Hawaiian groups to say that, hey, we should kick out the military. That's just that's not a realistic right. thing, I don't think. And yeah. I wouldn't even go down that path. But it, to say that, you know, you can't have a sovereign area like maybe the entire big island could be a sovereign part of or a sovereign right. thing of Hawaii, uh -huh. you know, for instance. I think that's totally um, legit and could happen. You know, it could happen in our lifetimes. Who, how do you, um, cause then interviewing you, me, I'm something, but you have, me. you have sons, right? I, I mean, do. just kids in general, like how do you impart the cultural stuff? So I want the, I want my kids to be citizens of the world and I want them to be successful. I want them to have, you know, the feelings of pride for being Hawaiian, being from Hawaii, um, but with that doesn't necessarily mean you have to learn the language. You have to um, be involved necessarily with the culture all the time. But take care of the land, yeah. um, taking care of people, taking care of things in that in that sense. But not just doing it here in Hawaii, but also, you know, I, I totally anticipate my children will be living in the mainland mm. or somewhere around the world um, when they're grown ups. Right. I, um, just the way the cost of living and the jobs and stuff here in Hawaii are, have been going, it's, it's just going to be hard for them to, to, um, raise right. a family here. And I don't want them for, I don't want that necessarily for them. I want them to have great opportunities to do all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. Um, and I want them to be successful. So do I want them to go into, you know, Hawaiian politics and not necessarily, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe state politics. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. You know, national politics, could they be senators? You know, could they be judges? Yeah, I'm totally down for that kind of thing. I think they can do more for Hawaii and Hawaii people or, you know, people of Hawaiian ancestry by going outside the box and, out and leaving the island, learning, and then coming back and maybe bringing yeah. bring stuff to the islands um, in that way. I don't have any, like, Samoan cultural stuff in my kid's life. Yeah, like nothing. Mm. Cause I, cause I didn't participate. Right. So it's like, I can, I occasionally have to remind them that they're Samoan because you know, my son especially is pretty Hollywood looking. He does not look Samoan. <laughs> yeah. 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 My daughter, like just cause she looks like the Samoan side of the family. Mm -hmm. Like for us, it's like, Oh yeah, yeah. She totally looks like my sister, like, like my cousins. But my son is like super Hollywood looking. 
So it's it, like to think about having those kinds of concerns and elements is interesting because I spent a lot of time because of my dad growing up around Hawaiian language and culture. There's all this stuff that I was, um, you know, that I was introduced to um, without thinking about it, you know, because he would just take me places. Mm-hmm. And and like any stupid young man, I didn't pay any attention only to later on realize, oh, like I know this because of that. And then one time we did that. Oh, OK, OK. Mm-hmm. So it all kind of makes sense in that context. And the funny thing is that I realized when we travel, when we go abroad, uh, we were in Japan um, back in January, and we're on the, the train, and there's this family from, I think, Malaysia. And, you know, we get to talk, and the guy goes, where are you from? And I say, anytime. I'm traveling anywhere. They go, where are you from? I say, oh, I'm from Hawaii. And they go, where? Hawaii. Where? Hawaii. What? Oh, U.S. They go, oh, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, it made an interesting conversation because it was in that that I realized that um, Hawaii first, like within those circles of identity, yeah. I'm always like Hawaii first. And then U.S. is just the next circle out. Mm-hmm. And not that they're mutually exclusive. They're not. But it was, you know, as I left to say, it was it, Thomas Jefferson that said, Virginia is my country. It was like, this is my home. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of goes outside from there, mm-hmm. which was an interesting realization for myself. I was like, oh, oh. I'm Hawaii first, yeah, and then everything else. Uh, that's weird. I do know that when we tr- when I do travel um, outside the country, um, in con- conversing with um, the locals in those, you know, we went to Malaysia, Singapore, yeah, and um, Canada. Uh, people react differently to you if you tell them you're just from the United States versus you tell them that's true. Too. I'm from I'm from Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, you're from Hawaii, yeah. as opposed to, oh, you're an American. Right, right, right. That's true, too. <laughs> ah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely an element of that as well. Yeah, because, you know, Hawaii's seen as like this little paradise in the middle of the Pacific. Yeah. With if they have really, really nice people. I, I wondered if I said I was from Alabama, that if they would still say where. I mean, probably. Probably. Because when you ask somebody where they're from, you're not expecting something specific. Right. Whenever I talk to people. But if you told me from New York, yeah. they would well, they identify, can, yeah, okay, you're, from, that. you're an American from New York. Yeah. The, whenever I talk to people, you know, ask them where they're from, I was trying to get super specific. Because yeah. somebody says, you know, like California. I'm like, where? All of it or just one part? <laughs> I go, Northern California, all of it or just one part? The Bay Area, don't say the Bay Area. Like, where, where are you from? It's like uh, just north of San Francisco. It's like, come on now. It's like Marin County. It's like, thank you. I know where Marin County. I've been there. You know, like, give me some credit. Like, I may not have been to like you the feel far like reaches that's of kind the of, cities. Yeah, do you feel like that's kind of them demeaning you for saying that they're just from a, a giant state? Well, I think that people... Thinking that you don't know your geography? If I were, if I were to be in Nebraska and say I was from, you know, like from Cotton Key, right? Nobody's going to know what I'm talking about. I had mm-hmm. to work a couple ways out there. Mm-hmm. I'd be lucky to get Oahu, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, oh, I think I know what that is. Like, oh. So it's it's a matter of where we think we're talking, right? It's sure. that, those kind of circles of identity. Because if you're talking to somebody that lives in the next, you know, within the region, you can talk by the town. That's right by, mm. right by Breverton or whatever, right? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking to a family from, um, there was a couple from Turlock, right? Yeah, it's in California. Okay. Where, you know, the first they said California. It's like, oh, what part? Like, Northern California. Like, come on. Well, it's like Turlock. And I was like, I have been to Turlock. And they're like, really? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, uh, we were going from uh, East Bay to Yosemite and my friend mm. was like there's this great taco stand in Turlock and so we stopped in Turlock I'm like yeah well there's a couple you remember which one it was I was like I have no idea what name it was but I can tell you was it a was it a, was it a restaurant or a stand it was like it was a, it was like a truck but there was a it had its own parking lot and there was a bathroom building I'm like yeah, yeah yeah and in the bathroom there was a weird like uh, like gated uh, you know like a metal screen door like oh it's Silva's and I was like yeah, yeah I've been there it's really good I'm like yeah yeah it's our favorite taco stand and it was like you know like this place like you can go from this but suddenly we've had the same experience right yeah, which yeah, is yeah. not that far for most of us right it's like it may not be in Turlock but you're know, like like we have all these similarities yeah we have these similar experiences and sometimes we walk the same ground but yeah it, it's it, it is really interesting where you um find closeness with people or with strangers when you talk about like traveling to different places and the, oh you know I've been to that place I've been to this place yeah. and the, hey yeah, I've been to that taco stand yeah, yeah. And, and so we may not agree about anything right but it's like hey we're friends now but there's a total like connection yeah. now I think you know like uh, well as we got to know each other through scouting scouting was a yeah. really interesting yeah like uh, this past summer 
my wife did a uh, like a conference up in Philmont in New Mexico, mm-hmm. which is you know the national training center, I think. And uh, and so there's these scouters from all over. Scouters, for those who don't know, is a term for adults who are involved with scouting. Um, scouters. So, <laughs> so there's scouters all over, and uh, like we're outliers in the wider scouting community. I think we could see that within our um, Cub Scout, within our pack, like when we do things with other packs, right? With other dens and things outside. Mm-hmm. Like it's really interesting. It's very, it tends to be more conservative, a lot of uh, religion, especially LDS, a lot, a lot of military. So we, we're talking about we're as outliers. We, uh, cause, cause like the, scouts in general are outliers well, the, or Hawaii? Well, the, the, our specific like pack one. Oh, our pack. Yeah. Okay. Is it, is a slightly different, it, but there's, cause a, it's so big, but it's a big tent. Scouting is a huge tent. And so going over there to Philmont and interacting with all these folks that, you know, maybe in a different context, we would see more of the differences and the commonalities. Mm. We can have these weird and interesting conversations that we wouldn't normally because we already have these agreed upon values, right? Mm. It's community of values. These are things that we all agree with. I've agreed to get my son or daughter now, daughters yeah. now, into scouts. Yeah. You have agreed to do that also. Therefore, there are these set of rules we've all agreed upon right. and are all these values and stuff. So, so even, if we're, even if we're not, you know, even if we're like politically or all these different things, mm-hmm. it's wide spectrum. Yeah. It was like, oh no, but here we are. There was a, I was wearing, cause it was freezing. It was 30 degrees at night, you know, in the middle of summer in New Mexico. So I have my schmock, my, my, my shawl thing. And a, a Colonel, Colonel McFarland, who I, you know, been hanging out with, uh, you know, he comes up to me. Jamie doesn't know <laughs> who he is or that I know him. Like me and Jamie are just walking uh, through the, through camp. And, and John comes up and he goes, you know, I tell the last time somebody was wearing those, they were shooting at me. <laughs> And Jamie's like, oh. and I'm like, oh, John, it's okay. <laughs> We're good now, though. <laughs> and I just cracked up because, you know, like, because I know this guy. Like, you know, there's all these things that we might disagree with or think differently about, but we have a relationship. So mm. anything else is all good. Like, we can have these far-ranging conversations, you know. There was one person from Boston. <laughs> she, was, she was the only one in yoga pants. Um, and I was like, so how has your scouting experience been? Cause I was, and she was like kind of itchy. I was like, I know what you mean. <laughs> like, yeah, because you seem to be, you know, on the more, you know, left-leaning liberal outside, progressive mm-hmm. side. It's like, yeah, it's been good. You know, it's it'd been interesting to try to, to they were actually working, like her and her husband working on this education project. And mm-hmm. it's been interesting to try to get people involved because they're outside of some circles. Scouting is seen as a negative thing or, you know, it has all yeah. these negative connotations. And then you have to convince them, no, 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 it's not. It's anything you want it to be. Right. Because there's yeah. still some people that think it's like a paramilitary kind of thing. It's like, right. yeah. why? Why do you think that? Because they wear uniforms. Yeah. And they salute. It's like, it's like eh. that, that they make fires. Yeah. <laughs> there's all these other things. And it's not that um, that they're mutually exclusive or that, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that there's a huge element of civics that we just miss yeah. in America in general, let alone our education about, you know, our history as America and what America means, which is also, you know, what we make of it. Mm-hmm. But also, um, like our involvement in it, all those kinds of things. It's like once you know, you know, you make choices. Mm-hmm. And then the most important thing is that you have your eyes open, you make the choices. And if you don't want to be a part of a community, that's cool too. But it, one of the things I realized is that the only way to have a big tent is to have people show up in the tent. And if that means that I'm the only one that's like me over there, that's totally cool. And as being, you know, Polynesian, you know, in these in these Hawaii environments, it was like. Yeah, I'm already making the tent bigger. You know, it's like this is how this is how this works. This yeah. is how we are, and they're all happy because they have a Hawaiian in there. Yeah, they're like, yeah. like, no, I'm actually just from Hawaii, <laughs> yeah, right. Samoan. Like, Hello, <laughs> I'm doing. It. Yeah, yeah, it's all over. So it was, it was really cool. Um, you know, I had a, I had the strangest conversation I ever had because they had a I was a spouse and they had a separate group for spouses, the Silverados, and so you know, like kids are broken up into age groups and they go off and do adventures, and then the the scouters are in conference or in conference and then the spouses get their own adventures and we would have to carpool and we were carpooling to this, uh, to Taos, I think to go uh, whitewater rafting is pretty cool. And I've been uh, two older, you know, Caucasian ladies and we get into a conversation about, um, white privilege. And I was like, Oh, please don't make me, don't make me, 
I'm sitting in the back. I actually start off by going, you know, people from Hawaii are famous for going to sleep after being in the car for 15 minutes. So yeah. I don't expect I'll make it very far if I'm not driving. <laughs> so I'll just hang out back here. And they start talking about, you know, how like things are very difficult for white straight men now. And I was like, uh, you know, I had to, you know, everybody's entitled to different opinions and perspectives. Yeah. But the thing that I said and the way that I approached it, which I just, it's not a very comfortable thing for me. But as a as a person of vague ethnicity, I was like, I got to say something. I was like, the thing that I was taught growing up by my dad is that you pronounce somebody's name the way they say it. Correct. And that's the most basic way of respect. Mm-hmm. So you let them define who they are. Mm-hmm. And whatever context you might be in, however it is, and we're, and we're going to have a lot of weird conversations over the next you know 20 years because there's a lot of different things that have come up, you know, amongst different identities, different groups that we're mm-hmm. much more um, in tune with now as a, a, just to be respectful as opposed to just let me force this identity upon you. It's like, let me, you know, we're going to work these kinks out and we're going to try to define ourselves and how we all work together. Yeah. But the idea is that we respect each other. Yep. I mean, if you can say hello and thank you in a hundred languages, you're doing pretty good, yep. right? And you're going to be fine. But I was like, that's how I try to approach it. So it's not a matter of like, I'm taking this away from you who didn't realize you ever had it though. You did. You're right. It's a matter of like, you know, I need to address how I define myself yeah. and what this means in context. And sometimes it's going to get funky, but I'm ultimately I think it's going to be make for a more wider and bigger tent for all of us. So be nice to people. That's basically yeah. what it is. Yeah. Be, be nice. And once you, once you, you know, agree to certain values, once you're in that environment, it's yeah. easy to, be with people that you totally yeah. disagree with. All right. So we're going to wrap right. up. We're going to wrap up. Brother Aito, thank you so much. It's been great talk. Joe. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did we no. just talk about sorry, calling people it's the terrible. names that they want to be called by? I identify as an EO, and I'm going to be called an EO. I also love that EO means um, hawk. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah, that's so good. cool. Yeah, call me a hawk. But it has no kita if it's well, a hawk. How you pronounce it differently though? Not at all. Right. Just if there's a, a word that comes before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But some people will write my name Eo with a okina in the middle, uh, yeah, it's, in yeah. between the I. Eo. Eo. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Huh? That means yeah. like worm or something. <laughs> it's completely different. <laughs> Eo. Well, I'm Ito. I'm He's just Ito. some dude. Ito and Eo. Okay. Thank you so much for no, <laughs> talking. No, thanks for having me. This is just, great been great man and i hope you guys enjoyed it if you haven't yet subscribe below and as always stay happy hoy the haunted castle no that was what is it what? the abandoned castle oh, this is the abandoned castle oh this is the abandoned castle